Hey folks, I'm Fred from Zendesk here with Jacob, and we're here today to talk about no average customers delivering customer happiness with customer specific SLOs. We're excited to present today at Dash 2021. So, hi, I'm Fred. I'm a uh, SRE in observability at Zendesk. Uh, I kind of have a role of logician, which means I think a lot about service level objectives and error budgets. And I also think a lot about uh, metrics, logs, and traces and how to use those effectively. So I'm kind of an observability economist. I've been doing the software thing uh, you know, for about 20 years, started off on Apple II Plus. I'm a dad, so I have two young kids, which means I need a lot more coffee and sleep. And here's where you can find me on the uh, uh, interwebs, on the Twitter at Fred Moore with a PH instead of an F, and Red Hot Penguin on LinkedIn, a throwback to my uh, Gen 2 Linux consulting days. Hi, I'm Jacob. Uh, I'm a site reliability engineer here at Zendesk, um, where I'm focused mostly on the availability of our services. Um, so I do a lot with uh, general systems engineering, uh, but also more specifically observability, data, operations, and just scaling the business. Uh, I'm a software engineer, or I've, I have 13 plus years of experience dealing with operations, writing code in Go, Python, Bash, and various other languages. Uh, I love Linux, I use Arch. I'm also a dad, I got two kids. Uh, I need more sleep and coffee all the time. And uh, you can find me here on LinkedIn. Thanks, Jacob. So at Zendesk, reliability is feature number one. We need to provide world-class service to our customers so they can provide it to theirs. Our initial journey into SLOs was successful, but like any popular TV series, a plot twist came our way in the form of a mystery, which is where Jacob and I started collaborating on the problem. Yeah. And as you can tell from the title of this presentation, there was more to be discovered from our data. We had to do more digging to better understand our customers and how they were using our platform. So we had developed high precision tooling to measure SLIs and feed that into the Datadog SLO widgets. And as we refined that tooling, we were able to get insight into customer specific reliability measurements. So Jacob and I extended the tooling to solve the mystery of customer specific reliability. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about here at Zendesk how we actually implemented this. There were some cardinality challenges uh, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit how we dealt with it and then we'll wrap up with how Zendesk uses this new set of data. So at Zendesk, as Fred said, reliability is feature number one. If we can't serve our customers, they can't serve theirs. So let's look at an interesting case study. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Zendesk and uh, us as a company. So as a business, we're growing and obtaining larger customers. And we can see this just by looking at our traffic patterns. Uh, this year, 2021, we're looking to, um, to continue this growth pattern. Uh, this is just a graph of our ticket volume, which is one of our most important metrics here. Our systems are being stressed more than previous years, so we need to make sure that we are looking at the right data in order to have the right conversations about our business and services. So speaking of those larger customers using our platform, uh, these customers stand out. Just look to the right of the red line. Each dot represents a large customer. Overall, they represent a small percentage of our total customer base, but most of our ticket volume. So if that pattern sounds familiar to you, then you probably have heard of the 80-20 rule. Uh, why is it important to identify these customers? In our business, we have many products with many features. There are some features which certain customers focus on more than others. This causes interesting effects on our systems. It reveals bottlenecks and choke points. Sometimes we know about them, but oftentimes we don't. So by watching these customers, we can better understand our availability and better engineer our systems for our customers. All right, so let's dig into that case study. For a given deployment of our platform, we stack thousands of customers. So there shouldn't really be anything surprising there. Uh, in this picture, this particular deployment has about 98,000 customers. Just looking at this number, we know that there's a problem here, but that's a lot of data to comb through. We can use Datadog APM, and that will give us some indications that uh, about our, the slow calls that are um, uh, attributing to this, this line, but it doesn't necessarily draw the conclusion on how specific this problem really is. So something is lurking because there's only one customer which influences this particular SLO. The blue line is the same as in the previous picture, but if we just exclude this one particular customer in, in, um, in question here from the computation, we'll get the orange line. So there are many examples where we can draw this picture with other accounts. So uh, in staging, we uh, have a testing account which also performs poorly. So we kind of, you know, kind of went through the same exercise. And we can kind of see this using the Datadog uh, SLO widget. So if you look here, you can see whenever this load test runs, it performs poorly. And we can see this directly in the SLO. Thanks, Jacob. 
So let's talk about how we implemented SLOs, the Zendesk way. Um, we were faced with implementing SLIs and SLOs for over a thousand engineers. And when you do something like that, you've got to give, get everyone on the same page and give them the same formulas, or you're going to end up with a thousand different definitions of each. And so initially on this project, I looked at, um, you know, how do we define those? How do, what formulas do we hand out? And the material at the time, the Google SRE book, the Site Reliability Workbook, those gave some clues, um, but they didn't really give any specific examples. And so I leaned into uh, a video by Liz Fong Jones and Seth Vargo, which kind of represented the other major way of um, defining SLIs. So let's take a look at that. So SLIs delineate good requests from bad requests. You know, a good request is one that's say like, you know, faster than 500 milliseconds and returns a 200. A bad request is one that, you know, could be a 500 or is really slow so that the user leaves. Um, so let's take a look at the formula that we used uh, to tell engineers how to define these things. So right here you see you know a couple things. You know, an example SLI is home page request could be served in less than 100 milliseconds. And we really parse this out into three different pieces um, to make a formula. And this fits conveniently into the um, some of the Datadog tooling where you have the query parameter. So first we have a metric identifier. In this case, it's home page request served in some amount of time. And then we have an operator, which in this case is less than, it could be equals, not equals, or greater than, you know, some sort of Boolean operator. And then we have a metric value. In this case, 100 milliseconds. Put this all together, and we've got an example SLI that we can show to a thousand different engineers and say, your SLIs need to look like this. And let's move on and take a look at how we defined SLOs. So, SLOs, and folks who have used the Datadog SLO widget will recognize this, it's the count of good requests divided by the count of total requests over a certain time range. And so we put that into a formula also. And folks were probably familiar with, you know, the percentage part of SLOs more than anything else. You know, here's an example SLO that we put together as a formula. 95% of homepage requests served in less than 100 milliseconds over the last 24 hours. We've got three distinct pieces here. We've got a success objective, you know, the familiar percent amount, and then we embed our SLI in there. And then we have a period, you know, in this case, 24 hours. And if you read through most of the literature, the period is what gets left off on a significant number of examples. And that's very important. You know, is it number of requests over five minutes? Is it a week? That's a really important piece. And to put this all together, um, you know, was pretty easy, but really we had to focus in on a couple of the parts such as, you know, measuring availability, whether a request was good or bad, you know, whether you get a 200 or 500 is easy, but really the challenge came with measuring latency. So let's take a look at how we did that. Um, so measuring latency uh, for web requests can be done a number of ways. We ended up looking at three different ways and I'm gonna talk about these now in detail and show you what we decided upon. So the first approach, as a lot of folks are probably familiar with, is the StatsD or dog StatsD histogram, um, where you take you know uh, a latency value, say 100 milliseconds, and you know create a, a StatsD histogram. And this is good because it returns you a number of metrics: the count, the average, the median, the max, and the P95, 95th percentile, which in quantile notation is shown as Q95. So this is pretty good. Um, it's a lot better than a gauge, which you should not use to measure latency. But there's some drawbacks um, per host and agent metrics cannot be aggregated. So if you've got you know, more than one data dog agent um, generating these histograms, you can't average the, those together mathematically. And that's kind of what this formula at the bottom of the slide shows you. You, know, you can't take two P95s, um, average them together, and get the same as if you took the raw data set and just calculated the P95 from that. So let's take a look, take a look at a better option, which is data dog distributions. These uh, went public maybe a year ago. There's an excellent paper out on them, I think on acolier.org, which, which breaks down the DD sketch uh, uh, approximate histogram and shows you kind of how that works. And this is, this is a great um, you know, way to do it because it gives you a number of different quantiles and you can also merge these across hosts. So you know, if I've got two different hosts, you know, I can submit my P95s from each of those. Well, in, actually under the hood, it just submits the Datadog sketch but essentially it allows you to aggregate percentiles 
and you can get like a P95 or a P99 for an entire cluster, which is awesome. I can say my entire cluster has like a P99 of 400 milliseconds. There's some drawbacks to this approach though. Um, the P99, of course, which is the highest one currently, only gets you to 99%, but you know, that's, that's a surmountable uh, drawback. Um, the other uh, thing that we needed from there, which we couldn't get, was inverse quantiles. And an inverse quantile is essentially a way of saying like, you know, um, taking 500 milliseconds as a threshold and saying, you know, what is my percentage of requests above that and below that? That's, you know, a little bit different than saying like the P99 of my cluster is 500 milliseconds um, because that P99 will vary from time to time. And really what we wanted to do is take a, a threshold that we knew our users would be happy with and calculate the percentage of requests uh, above and below that. Uh, next slide, please. So we uh, basically uh, implemented histograms, or, which are also known as latency bands, and this allowed us to calculate the percentage of requests over NASLI, you know, be it you know, 100 milliseconds for a fast service, be it 500 milliseconds for a slow, slower endpoint, and kind of get a really accurate count of the uh, request ratio above and below that, which you know, I'm going to show fits very well into the Datadog SLO widget. Uh, they're high precision. You can merge them together. Some drawbacks are that you, know, you need some knowledge and assembly required for these, and cardinality needs some management. Let's take a, you know, I'm gonna, sh if you look at the, uh, the two lines on the bottom, say I have an example latency of 125 milliseconds. The way that I would generate a latency band metric from that is I would do a statsd counter, I can increment that, and I can use a tag to specify the latency band. In this case, you know, I can say like, well, it's 125, so I'll lump that into a tag saying the request was greater than 120 milliseconds, but less than 130. And that fits very well into a data dog tag. And now let's take a look at how we can actually implement that as an SLO in the data dog widget. Well, first, let's actually take a look at three different types of histograms. So on the left, you see a what's called a log linear histogram, which when people think of histograms, this is pretty much what comes to mind. You know, I could, you know, and in the previous example, you know, if I take 125 milliseconds, I could assign that one tag here, say that it's greater than 100 and less than 200 and make that a data dog tag. There's also, you know, folks are probably familiar you know, with the cumul cumulative histogram, which uh, Prometheus uses. Now, uh, I've represented the number of tags that you need to represent this latency by the blue uh, rectangles. So in this case, you're gonna need a lot of rectangles and hence a lot of tags here to specify that this request was, you know, basically around 125 milliseconds. And that poses a bit of a cardinality challenge for this approach. So we came up with an approach, you know, kind of flipping the cumulative histogram on its head and invented an inverse cumulative histogram, which is a way of saying that, you know, if this sample request was 125 milliseconds, we could bump a counter and put the tags on it saying, oh, it was greater than 10 milliseconds, greater than 50 and greater than 100, but not greater than 200. And this might be a bit of a head scratcher, and even two years later after implementing this, it's still a bit of a head scratcher for me. But what we found is it works very well um, because it's low cardinality. Um, it gets us a high approximation of what the latency was. It's mergeable and it fits easily into the Datadog SLO widget. So let's take a look at that. So here, you, you know, everyone's probably familiar with this widget. We basically are able to calculate the SLO, and this is the, um, the entries for the numerator, which are the good events. And we take the number of total events, which are you know, the count of requests that had the greater than zero tag, because all requests were faster than zero. Um, we subtract the number of requests that were greater than 10 seconds, in this case represented by 10,000 milliseconds. And then we subtract the number of requests that you know, had a 500 status code. And what we get is the number of uh, essentially good requests, and we divide that by the total requests. And the Datadog widget for SLOs spits out the amount of error budget we have remaining. And we can also set you know, a number of different levels based on different time frames. So this was really easy to put in place. And if you think about, well, why can't you just do that with the log linear or the uh, cumulative histogram? The answer is um, in the simplicity here. This is very easy to read. If you used either of the other implementations, you know, you'd have several more entries for each of those uh, rectangles. And in the case of, you know, adding up the total number of requests, you'd have to select every bin of the log linear histogram. So really this gave us something that um, was high precision and yet very easy for an operator to implement. And back to you, Jacob.
All right, so getting personal with customer SLOs. So how we manage the cardinality challenge. As Fred uh, alluded to, there's some cardinality issues that we have to deal with. So let's take a look at, take a look at, at this a little bit. So perhaps this question already popped into your head. With all the many accounts that we have, how do we track them all? Well, the, the short answer is we don't. We only track the uh, identified large accounts and perhaps a few others of interest. Uh, the reason why is that um, we need to con uh, control our metrics volume. Uh, so when planning metrics, your choice of tags are important as they directly affect the metrics volume that you use. The formula that you need to consider for yourself is the Cartesian product of all tag sets. This will equal your theoretical volume of a specified metric. So just looking at uh, our SLIs, this shows you how it played out for us. Um, if we add up all of our tag sets just that we use, we end up with about 44 billion unique combinations, which is a big scary number. So there were several tags at play for us which are not listed specifically, um, but we know that some of those tag combinations won't exist. Um, so as a best guess, we can eliminate those from the equation and focus on the ones we know we know would contribute to the most unique combinations. So if we do this, this gave us about 2.4 million unique combinations, which is a tolerable number for us. So we sold the idea of doing this using this number, knowing that the actual will probably be much lower. Um, in our case, not all customers use all features of our products, so therefore our actual volume will be lower since some of our SLRs won't have any data. So just to uh, confirm the actual, we wrote a script which scrapes the data uh, API from Datadog, and we found out that our actual volume ends up being about 870,000. So if we don't watch them all, how do we control who we watch? And at Zendesk, we have a feature flag system. Um, so this helps us control the features that are enabled for uh, different accounts, giving us easy ways to control um, how this tag, uh, tag uh, gets distributed. So uh, in addition to that, we also take part in Datadog's metrics without limits, and we use this to ensure that our tags, tag use is well controlled. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few slides. So for calculating actuals, we ran a script similar to this one, um, which utilizes Datadog's APIs uh, to ask for our distinct metric volume. So we provide a metric namespace so that we're only calculating the ones that we care about, and then it just outputs your, your volume. So pretty straightforward. So, and uh, just want to call it, we're also customers of metrics without limits. So this allows us to select which tags are indexed and which are not. Um, so if you're using this feature, then this is what the view would look like. Um, so notice the ingest and index numbers are not the same. So in this case, we only care about the index numbers. So this would be your GUI way of doing things. So we build our products to match the needs of our customers. They will help show us new ways of using our products, which ultimately will lead us to uh, interesting discussion. How can we better support our customers given the way our products are being used? So Zendesk is using this new data to help make sure we are um, using common language across the company divisions. Um, converging on definitions allows us to have much more meaningful uh, discussions on our products when it comes to reliability. In addition, we're also using this data to drive discussion about how to scale our products. Um, this could entail that we introduce some new product limits to help govern our aspects of our system, or possibly some feature that was not designed in a way which scales with the needs of our customers. So just having this data is gold. So thank you for taking the time to listen to us. We're hiring and we use Datadog, so come check us out at jobs.zendesk.com.